Yo, what's poppin' YouTube? We are back again with another episode of We Got That Smoke with none other than Master Teacher Bobby Hammond. Sit back and enjoy. Two days from 1999. Now, the key is you're not gonna get it because you think, because see, he doesn't realize, which I'm going ahead of myself. Uh, I'm going ahead of myself, but I'm not even backtracking. He's thinking it's from Arab over in the Middle East. So that's why they over there trying to blow up some shit, trying to stop the great king of terror that's due to come and kill their ass when it's us. A group of individuals talks about it even in the what? It talks about it even in the Book of the Dead. You see what I'm saying? And, it, and, it, and it's interesting that I'm talking to you because when you look it up in the hieroglyphic dictionary, it spells my name, H-E-M-M-I-T. Yeah, H-E, instead of I-T-T, -T, it's H-E-M-M-I-T. It's in the hieroglyphic dictionary. And it means a group of spirits that will be living in the last days. The Hemet spirits of a Hemet. It's either called the Hemet spirit of a Hemet spirit. You see what I'm saying? Which, which I was born with this thing, so I didn't change it to this thing. And I'm not trying to make no claim that I'm the Messiah or you all follow me, you know, none of that kind of shit. We're not talking about that. I'm just trying to give you a description just so happen my name, it happens to be my name. And it talks about a class of beings, or it's also called Kim spirit, which means black. The word Kim means a class of stars. And every man and every woman is a star. That's what you are, S-U-N, of God, instead of S-O-N, that's that old, it was changed to S-O-N based on patriarchy to try to wipe out the damn woman, and, it's, and wiping out the woman is to try to kill the feminine energy because it is the feminine energy and it's not no mothering shit, it ain't no mothering in love, it's the pure violence of this feminine energy. Pure ass whipping violence. Head head rule. It is pure hatred and anger, which is the divine shit we're talking about. The white man telling you not to hate. We'll get into that too. We're gonna deal with it tomorrow on the theology of hate. Ain't no shit I made up. So I'm saying all that nigga that ain't gonna fool. I'm telling you, the shit that you feeling in you saying fuck this shit. That's the God in you telling you what time it is. Including fuck niggas too, because that's who you get mad with most of the time, because niggas is fucked up too. As a matter of fact, all bullshit aside, I hardly have any conversation with the damn white man, because he was other than the regular racism, and that's been going on since we've been here. You're used to that shit, and we gotta understand that the white man is doing what he's designed to do. Don't get mad at him for doing what he is designed to do. I'm upset with black people for having all this potential and don't want to do shit and don't give a damn, don't want to be nothing related to themselves. You see what I'm saying? So either way we talk about this psychology of hate is a certain spiritual energy that we're talking about right here. So, uh, 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 right here. So we're going to pull our bases. Also, too, we got to get out of this childlike people shit. We are a childlike people. So I might come in and do some profound stuff, but say one or two curse words and a person dwell in on that. Like the, like you say, the sister was going to buy my tape and she heard me curse. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because we are a childlike people. That's what children do. Children can't get nothing, but if you curse one or two times, they'll always pick up on what's called. They're like, when you took Spanish for the first time in high school, the first thing you do is learn all the cuss words. That's my cooler, kiss my ass. Time not choo choo, give me some pussy. That's it, you know. She, we learn all that bullshit. You see, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, you know, that's the first thing we ask, what the cuss words is. That's my cooler. If I the best my cooler. You see. <laughs> spirit and black people are reduced to childlike spirits in slavery. So therefore we're gonna only gonna pick up on the things like I was I, I, I was in New York and did this whole major lecture on all this profound stuff. The brother came to me and it was awesome. But um I'm just interested you kept saying nigga. I'm like well 
okay, well, we'll get into the con, you know, there's the Saul Negro, which is the black, black son, the Negrito, which is the black in the stage. We're talking about our ancient word, uh, the, the ancient word Necronomicon, the book, the black book, all this time. I said, but the point is, I'm not even going to explain that. I can't explain that. I said, but the point is, Look at all that damn knowledge we just we just went through for the last two, four hours. And you only pinpointed on some bullshit or argument you done had the last 20 some years. You didn't learn nothing I'm saying. I said that's what's more concerned. I'm more concerned about that. That's the tragedy to me. That you you come into a place, it's like you know, Carly came into a place and this was the first time that most of the people at that time about 10 years ago, ever read, the, heard the King Alpha Plan, the Rex 82 King Alpha Plan. And he read the King Alpha Plan and he said, God damn. So at the end of the election, some woman stood up and said, we need to be more consistent. What the hell are you talking about? Well, you said the word God damn. Now this is an educated black woman in her damn 40s. Her 30s or whatever. I'm like, this man just told you these people are coming to kill your ass and the only thing you dwelling in on is God damn? That's because we're childlike people. That's the difference. We're pathological grown-up children at large, permanent children. You see, and we dwell on the small, mediocre thing. That's why you ride a damn bus. You'll see that. You'll see that. You you ride a bus. You get on it. You'll see a white person on there, city bus. You see white people on there. You'll see um, um, Hispanic people on there. These people they ain't got no shoes and shit. And all, and they'll be in there, and they'll be chilling. Be some nigga in their front. You see what I'm saying? Because we are addicted to certain pathology. You see what I'm saying? And we don't understand that certain things. Oh, we go out to the mall now, and they, and, they, and they got people out there and all, and they go out to the mall thinking they're gonna get found. So they got a group of the do out groups like boys, and then they got about 400 of these people, and they just were singing and shit. We gotta get out of all that bullshit, cause most people, that's all they expect us. You see what I'm saying? When they had, a, when they had, a, when they had that survey with black people, the elementary school white kids and black kids, and it was, it was a survey on how, how white kids think, what they think of black kids, not what black people think of white children, cause we think of them as being God. But it was a survey of what white children think of their elementary school, I think elementary or junior high school, I think it was like, it was sixth and seventh grade, sixth, seventh and eighth. And they said, well, what do you think of black people? They said, well, they're good at sports. You know, obvious shit. They like their hair. The women, they like their hair. Because we, 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 uh, preoccupied with fucking hair. You see what I'm saying? That's why if you see black women, you see them, if they got that perm, I guarantee you don't have to be in their sight four seconds and they're grabbing onto that shit. You see, it's almost, they've done it so much until it's almost a reaction. You know how you scratch someplace so long until it become a common reaction? So you do it without thinking about it. They're always grabbing their hair. You see, so they like their hair, they like to sing, they like to dance. The same old basic shit we've been doing since goddamn book band days. Because we are a childlike people. And we think it's talent, no, the talent has been gone. We ain't producing no talent. Most of that shit is bullshit now. The music is harm, all of it. Not just the rap, all of it. If you really listen to it, it's harm. We're not producing nothing that we produced before. All that stuff is, you know, they got six or seven women groups and all of them sound horrible. You know what I'm saying? It's like even when I when I bought your girl, and she's artist of the year, um, uh, uh, your girl, um, from the Fuji's, um, Mm -hmm. Lauren Hill, but if you listen to a Lauren Hill can't sing what full nipple. Huh? That's an over clever. I say this shit ain't shit. I like that. I say that wait a minute, after a while, then the um, um, yeah, yeah, um, you know all that old bullshit. We ain't producing nothing. Now uh, it's, uh, you think I'm this is all in the scheme of things, but we are a child like people that we got to get to a higher level. At least with us, because this, this stuff is over. We don't believe nothing. I'm not here telling you that I'm not going to espouse to, to make a better day for black people. That ain't happening. We cut through the bullshit, so we don't have to come back here thousands of times again thinking the earth going to get better for black people. That's not happening. First of all, I'm looking at black people at a new light now. We're actually an obsolete people in the white man's society. 
practice is on a whole nother damn level. I'm, I'm not, believe me, I can say this shit about black people because I talk shit about the white man. We're going to go into this Yaku thing again tomorrow, on some new evidence on the Yaku thing <coughs> tomorrow. But I can talk this shit because I tell you the white man is the fucking fucked up uh, enemy or the devil or the beast or whatever you want to call it. So that way I can be critical with black people so I'm not like no, uh, 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 uh some, some old Republican motherfucker for telling you, we, we, are we looking at a critical analysis of black social pathology and behavior and all right, uh, and, and black social pathology and behavior. So my point is, it's almost like overnight we have become obsolete. Now we know the white man is behind this stuff, but my point is, I'm saying this particular thing because there's something divine in what I'm saying as if when you realize that there's no future for you, you can get to the next plateau. It is only when you realize that there's no future to you, when you, to you can, that you can go to the next plateau or still be bouncing around here talking about we don't own this, we don't own that. We're never going to do that. We're never going to own it. Number one, number one, we are not advanced enough to own it because we are sick in the head. Number two, on top of that, we got an enemy that's going to make sure that we don't want it. Number three, we got an enemy that we don't know our damn enemy no more. Most people don't suspect that the white man is their enemy. Whenever the white man made you embarrassed to talk about racism, he got your ass. So the masses of the people are finished. But then again, there's something to divide in that because that's what is prophesied. When all is lost, that's when it comes. The guy tapped. Frank Casper, Franz Casper. There's an article in the book, the, the, the Messiah text, which is the Jewish Messiah text, which they took from the ancient, not the Jesus Christ of Christianity thing. That's the Roman. But we're talking about what the black Hebrews thought of the messianic thing in the Messiah text, Raphael Packing's book. And in there, as a Franz Casper said, the Messiah will come when there's no longer a need for one. Which means that this particular plane, this particular plane, the Messiah, the act itself, or when it comes, this particular plane has to be over. So we're talking about now having a group of people that look beyond this bullshit. Because it ain't happening. Let's be, so once you get that in your head, and you can go further. You see what I'm saying? You can go further on what's really going on here. You see what I'm saying? Now, looking further, my main thing is to give the science of what is all beyond that and what is the actual part of looking forward to that. And then basically that's what I've been doing since I've been lecturing. But even more so now, and, and now is the most critical time because never before in history do you realize we got a people that is in peace. This is what Angelash Muhammad said, you will know the end when the infighting starts among themselves. When self accuses self, when the infighting starts among the people who rule in you. Now, whether they doing it for a ritual, because a lot of this stuff is fake, it doesn't matter. For the mere fact that they got to even put it to you that they got to impeach a damn president means that there's something happening bigger. And they got to give it to you that way to distract you. Now, I brought the mind control books up the last time. We got enough here. The book is out of print, but thanks to this particular place, we got it. And the first rule of mind control is to distract the distraction. If you distract them, it leaves the whole mind open, the whole subconscious mind open, and you can rule them. So whenever they want you not to tap into something, it's distraction. That's the first rule of mind control. So that's the first two pages of the book, which the book is more relevant now than it was written 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. It's right on time. If anybody, I, I brought the book up last time. If anybody is taking advantage of looking through the damn book, you know what I'm talking about. This shit is right on time. You can't put it down. This shit be dropped. It's here, here. You see what I'm saying? And you take that book and you take four movies put them together as a series and you really got some shit. So you take that book, read that book, then go get Running Man on the Schwarzenegger 
and then go get see they, they made them in series but they separate them about two years apart that way you don't catch on so they take running man on a swap nigga and total recall on a swap nigga you put them together it's the actual manual then you go and get demolition man um uh uh Sylvester Stallone, two years apart, you go get Judge Dredd. They, they're made to go together. You get the full volumes and shit, and you will see it all in visual. Everything is in the damn book. Right, we're going to get into that in a few minutes, especially the Judge Dredd thing. But it's straight up mind control. You see? But this is the key right now. If they can distract you, they got you. You see, so let's do some libation right quick to get a God there's <clears throat> or the energy right. Because who was out here around hollering outside? What the hell was that? <laughs> Somebody out there asking the food? Oh, 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 that's children. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, then. That's beautiful. I thought it was grown people, but see, <clears throat> the last couple, the, the, the last time in, in Atlanta, the last two times I spoke there, there's always some crazy stuff going on on the outside while I'm speaking. And then I figured it out. It, it, we, we, I spoke there from 95 up to 90, 98, and the energy was all right. And then the energy, and they, they, they was constantly bombarding the place with energy. And then when the energy got real bad in the place, then the bullshit broke through. And we could no longer stay there anymore, so the place closed down. So we got to right. The bullshit started happening when another place opened up. You see? So, uh, uh, you know, so so I just thought it was like that. But if the children, that's understandable. That's some good energy anyway. You see, but then again, on these new damn children, I don't know. <laughs> that's another shit, too. <laughs> now, I need to talk about it right quick before I get off my mind. Right now, I'm going to get God says in a few minutes. But we got to deal with this, too. First of all, we, first of all, we know it's over. Because we're talking about a child now. Children used to have a, even though they weren't afraid of adults, that you had a certain fear of adults. When you get in the presence of an adult, you had a certain shameness about you. You might tell the damn devil, but you didn't do it around wrong people. Now you got a child, it could be in the mama arm, can't even walk it, it don't even feel you, it'll hit you. Because the new mama don't realize that that was taboo in the ancient world. You don't never strike out at a damn adult. They'll hit you now and the new mama thinks that that's cute because she's a baby having babies. So all of a sudden, because you got babies having babies, it has led to a whole culture of a breakdown science, man, whereas you talking about some damn, we say all oh, them just to do, that's some bullshit. This shit is out of hand. I'm not talking about juvenile delinquents. I'm talking about children that don't, that can't distinguish you being an adult. You understand where I'm coming from? You being an adult and other children, they don't know the difference now. And, it, and not only that, we're talking about a people that if they commit an act in front of you, the mama don't chastise. So you be talking and all, and she has to stop. You keep talking to grown people, and the child want to get in on the conversation, and she has to stop her conversation with a grown person just to answer this damn well, that shit didn't happen back in the day. First of all, you don't open your fucking mouth with grown people talking. Children are supposed to be seen and not heard. You think that's cruel, but these were doggone laws and stuff that we had to do because we were a dead people out of slavery. So we had to have strict codes and shit for the civil dog on fact. The white man was engineered us to go crazy in about five or six years after slavery. But we cultivated a culture based on discipline until it, until it ended up, the white man started copying our shit. He said, if these people here to produce the culture to, in actuality, they're more, more, more humane than us. You see what I'm saying? So now what we're talking about here, we're talking about there is no boundary between adult and child. Because the new mamas don't know and the new daddies don't know. But basically, you know, they don't know, they don't understand. So she gonna stop her conversation to go address him. You see what I'm saying? Back in my damn day, better stop the conversation and pick a nigga up and ass off the floor <laughs> and put his teeth back in his mouth. You see what I'm saying? That kind of stuff we're talking about. So we're talking about raising 
animals. Raising dog on animals. You see what I'm saying? That kind of thing. You got some people that get on top of it, but a lot of people, a lot of the mothers, the younger ones, and the fathers, we just say mother, because a lot of them, it, 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 they left because the, they're discipline ain't there with the father or whatever. But a lot of people, are left, even if they are together, they don't understand the concept that a child is a different entity and is supposed to have a certain amount of rearing. That's the common knowledge throughout history. Not, I feed my child, you drop off some damn food. Now you got that issue, drop off the food. I take care of my child, that ain't doing it. So my point is, we're talking about another, and plus, okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, there are some very advanced and spiritual people, souls that, 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 that came back. You must understand, because it is a very advanced and spiritual soul, it has to take much, much more care based on the energy. I was a very advanced soul, but I was bad. But the difference between my bad is I was bad outside of my mama and them things. You see the faith. I tell the devil. You see what I'm saying? But around grown people, it's a whole different thing. You see, like old drunk, old drunk man came to the house, pearly came to the house drunk. My mama said, nah, he out there drunk. She said, he, she said he might be drunk, he might be falling down, but you don't ever, ever say nothing to this man. I'm going to your ass. He's still an adult. I don't give a damn if he's sloppy drunk. You call me and I deal with it, but you 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 don't never say that to him. I don't give a damn if he's falling off the fucking porch. That's the kind of doggone camaraderie you had based on a certain discipline. You see what I'm saying? You know. Not no, you see, you can't let you sort of thing, but you can't let shit pass. But so now we're talking about a people. If you saw what happened to the generation that just went through all this bullshit, what you think will happen to them ones that's coming up? You see what I'm saying? Them generic babies. You know what I'm saying? So this is some stuff we're talking about. All the more to tell you that this particular stuff is over. You got to realize. Ambalaj Muhammad said the key is that you got to believe in an end. You got to believe in the end. That's quintessential. To, the, to, to this particular stuff, because the white boy still wants you to think that this shit gonna last forever. That way you can fill it his ass. See what I'm saying? Now, why couldn't he kill me? Because I was on the right track. You see, the white boy know all about me. They scared as shit, because there's a certain energy field going to certain people. Because I'm not trying to make a better America. So even you got conscious people still trying to get back to Africa and make a better, make a, do all this. That shit ain't happening. To me, I want one thing and one thing, or I wanted the shit to be over. Because I'm in the right energy field on what cycle it is, he can't fuck with that because he can bring about that. Even if you kill the person, you can bring about that particular part. So they don't mess with me because I'm on the right cycle. I want it over. You see what I'm saying? So that's the difference between the other people out speaking and stuff and all, and they're giving you all this other stuff to enhance your life. You, you had a, you living, you living around the damn cracker. I mean, the damn cracker got everything for you to keep you happy. So well, how much enhancing you need? That motherfucker got a damn station on every channel, and I grew up with fucking three, three damn stations: ABC, NBC, and CBS, and that's all. Now that mom got a station on every damn channel and shit. Plus 300 more channels if you get the satellite dish. This man got everything for you to enjoy. We ain't trying to improve the quality out. We trying to doggone get rid of this damn madness. That's the doggone drug out here. You got to understand the science on this. You see. So we're going to pull these libations and we're going to get into this particular lecture. I'm in rock. I said pop. I said pop. I say Ab, I say Koo, I say Sahu, I say Cab, I say Cabin, I say Cap, I say Second, I say Osea, I say Soot, I say New, I say Appet, I say Soot Nessie, I say uh, John Nessie, I say Ron Nessie, I say Soot Nubit, I say Cthulhu, I say Azazel, I say Azatho, I say Hastar, I say Shiv I say um, uh, uh, Near the Hotel, I say Dagon, I say Dogon, I say Ama, I say Neama, I say Ba. I say nah, I say nana, I say car, I say no more, I say 
Ama, I say Yuguru, I say Yuguru, I say Digitario stages, I say Izumu, I say Buzimu, I say Mozumu, I say Kamara, I say Kingu, I say Harambo, I say Rarimki, I say Muzimu, I say Bodo, I say Da, I say Seldo, I say Jodo, I say Fi, I say Yi, I say Fa, I say Mawa, I say Si, I say Magwa, I say Lia, Lisa, I say Legba, I say Ishu, I say Papagate. I say Obu Ferretti, I say Obu Shango, I say Ola uh, uh, Dumare, I say Odudawa, I say Ososi, I say Ola I say Ishu, I say Afra, I say, say Nothro, I say Magda, I say Fasaman, I say Mayamplam, I say Fasaman, I say Akarapan, I say Kimi, I say Fasaban, I say Hip. Prometheus, I say Epimetheus, I say Ket. Uh, a brother by the name of Randy Brown, which I'm gonna get into in a few minutes so you can understand who he is. Uh, I say, let me explain this to you. Like the two twins is interesting you said that because there's two lies. First of all, I come from a middle class family. My great grandmama had 16 children. She sent all the boys to college and all the girls to college. All the boys were preachers and all the girls were teachers, and that's all they used to do. And so then the second generation, my mama and all, you know how it is, when niggas get educated, the family gets smaller. <laughs> now that shit goes, so my grandmama got four children and shit, you know. Her grandmother, her mama had 16, so the family gets smaller. So anyway, basically, I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I ain't never wanted for shit. So like I said before, I am on a, I was a person that grew up middle class on a pilgrimage to be poor. And so that's my lot in life and shit. And the reason why I can really come and say that I talk shit about the money and all that kind of stuff, because since I always had, I don't ever necessarily miss, miss nothing. You see what I'm saying and all because I've never not known not having. That's the that's the thing uh, uh, about it. A good thing about that was this particular thing too. Now remember now, in the South and basically in the North at a certain time, we all benefited because across the street was a, was, was 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 uh, brothers and sisters who did not have right across the street. And the house the house here in the house there, you got to realize all this. Preachers and the teachers, everybody lived in the same black neighborhood. So the psychological aspect is was because Miss Shaw, my grandmama was a school teacher and my mama was a school teacher, they lived in the same damn neighborhood and we all uh, commune with the same people, welfare, drunk, this, that, every part of the society. The other people in the community automatically raised themselves up because they automatically had people in their families that were successful in the extended family. Now all the, all the black people that's educated done moved out now, so therefore the inner city brothers and sisters don't know nothing but the same kind of damn shit around them. You see what I'm saying? And that was the COINTEL Pro and, and, and based on putting black people into the corporate world so that that shit can happen. So the, so, the, so the difference between the black people from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and even in the 20s and stuff is everybody can see a damn model. I'm going to pattern myself at the model to do better because you knew all the doggone so-called upper mobile people in the same community. You understand where I'm coming from? Now, on the other hand, because we was in this type of community, I had a good, I had a friend named Randy Brown was the dialectically opposite from me, which means his family was so damn poor, we used to go in the house, they live in a little two-room house, and I swear to God, for every little dot of the stucco on this wall, that's how much roaches used to be running up the mall, by the millions. Look like a damn ant pile. And Randy, you faced him with raggediest clothes, and I mean, just, just dirt down poor. And everybody knew that Alberta Snow's children was the poorest people damn near in town. But, here it is, now the school teacher boy, Randy Brown was my best friend and I love Randy Brown. You see what I'm saying? And it didn't matter based on whatever the status was, you see? But now they always tell you that the worst damn children in the world are teachers and preachers children. Okay? I was hell on wheels. 
outside of the family. So I got the great growing up as far as knowing how to behave. But then again, on the other hand, I was doing all kind of shit. So I was an expert rover thief at the age of like seven or eight. Never stole nothing from black people, but I go on a motherfucking white person store and come out with that shit. So I taught Randy Brown how to steal. He's a poor man, but his, his mama was, his mother was, holy sanctified. Holy sanctified, real, you know. You know, holy sanctified, you know, because you know she, she, you know, had a lot of the holy sanctified people. They was really out there when they was out there. Them the ones that make their snarch Christian, the ones that's out there, you know, giving up ass and both raw legs. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, she even said I was a loose woman and all, but she holy sanctified. <coughs> and that's how I learned most of the Bible stuff because I was a big time AME. How that shit is. That's just, you know, you know, it was a, uh, uh, really the African method of principle in the 1800s was the black liberation organization. But by the time by the goddamn 60s and 70s, that shit was straight up <laughs> elitist Negro. So anyway, I learned more of the, the, the die hard fundamentalist the concepts through Randy Brown and shit. Because his family, you understand what I'm saying? So now, but Randy Brown, when he got turned on the steel and how I just sit back. I didn't even have to steal no more, but that mother go on a store and we used to rip these crackers off. We put terror on the little town of Mullen, South Carolina. <laughs> so it was a phase that we were going through. So when I went to junior high school, a lot of the teachers and a lot of the stuff started kicking in and started getting a little serious. So I started getting away from a lot of things. And then by the time I got in high school, you know, I was into women and all that kind of thing, dressing and you know, the, all the other trappings or whatever the deal is. But what happened was Randy went to the eighth grade and because his family was poor, he missed a lot of days. Now, we, we met in 1968 in like the second grade. And we missed a lot, he missed a lot of days. Now, this is a very key story. It's gonna get metaphysical in a damn minute. And I'm gonna bring this motherfucker right home to what's going on now. So don't just think I'm trying to waste your time by telling you some bedtime stories. The shit's gonna get heavy in a minute. So anyway, um, and I told the story in 1994, and who would ever know that the government would retaliate because of the story? So anyway, Randy Brown, we was in the eighth grade, and Randy Brown remained poor, whatever the deal is, but what happened was, was when Randy Brown got through on his head in wrestling, and he kind of went a little off for just a little bit, around 1977 or whatever the deal is. So anyway, when I met back up, Randy moved on the other side of town with his family. When I met back up with Randy, Randy was already out of school because he had missed so many days, so he basically dropped out like after the, after the eighth grade. But Randy was still still. And you know, I had grown out of that stuff, you know what I'm saying, and all, you know. You know, because, you know, I, I was I was an expert until I, uh, Randy took over, and then I would let him do all the stealing for me, so I kind of got stale on this shit. So I took his kid, I was going to get caught. You see what I'm saying? Because I had kind of, like, retired after the damn celebration. I let him do all the shit for me. So, <laughs> but it was a hobby. I mean, my parents, I had all kind of money. I just did the shit just to have one like I was poor and had to do the shit. It was a thrill of the stuff, you see what I'm saying? Anyway, what happened was is Randy was still ripping off. So, high school went on, and uh, his brother, which was a good friend of mine, came, and, and see the thing about I was an artist, and Randy was an artist, and, um, uh, and, and so, after high school, I think I was in the 11th grade, his brother came up to me, and they got Randy, man, um, he busted in the house, and you know, they got him, that was the first offense. Well, it just so happened, what was the fucked up thing about it was this. Just so happened, it was a police officer that went on a rampage in the, uh, in, in the town. And they was robbing banks and stealing all kinds of stuff. They robbed the night deposit box. They was robbing, terrorizing, robbing all the stores. So just so happened, a few months before the FBI came down and caught them, a few months before, Randy got caught breaking in this house, and the judge and, and, and basically they pinned all the crimes in the town on him. So he got 18 years off the bat, first offense, 17. Two or three months 
slayed them. They catch the real guys, but then again, a nigga in, a nigga in, they ain't gonna, re they ain't gonna reduce no sentence because they know the truth. So, it's almost like two different things. It's almost like the dark side and the light side. I go off to college and I have a time of my life and start to socialize and just everything, just, you know, just living it up in America is all this great shit, you know, and I'm just partying back and all, you know, just really, you know, um, just partying, you know what I'm saying, the girls, and just like, basically, just a basically, uh, fairy tale lifestyle. Meanwhile, this is the shit. The same time I'm in college, the whole time I'm in college, Randy is in jail for something he did on the first offense. So, because after I was in school, I learned how to use school as, a, as just a, just a, uh, you know, after I got out and all, I, I learned how to use school as a place where you can just go and get three hearts on a cut. So I learned how to do co co college loans and shit. So I said, damn, I need to get to Atlanta. I, I was in Columbia, South Carolina. I said, I know what I do. I'll get back in school. And I'll get my three hearts on a cut, get in the dormitory and get me some damn free meals. And then I can go and get jobs and do all that kind of stuff. So I went another damn near three, four years. So anyway, it was eight years, and the day that I got out, the same time that I finished, was the same time they let Randy Brown out. And Randy Brown did eight years. But remember now, he went in at 16 or 17, so when we, so what happened was, unfortunately, because he was wrongly accused and all, and he wasn't really a criminal, when he got in, he decided he was going to do good behavior, and he just didn't talk to nobody for eight years. When I was getting ready to go to New York because I was designing shoes at the time and I was going up to Fifth Avenue to, to pick out my shoes on the wall because I did the uh, Fall 88 line and Fall 89 line for this white boy Roger Bowman up in New York as Jew. So I was really, I was really in the shit. You know what I'm saying? Getting ready to get a million dollar contract. Had a, had the Jews going to give me a hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. The Jewish family going to give me five because I was the new nigga. And when nobody doing this shit, I was literally hooked up before I walked away from it all. So I come home in between going to New York and they say Randy's out. So I meet Randy after seven, after eight years. But the problem is, because Randy didn't talk to anybody for the whole eight years, Randy regressed back and Randy, whatever Randy, whatever Randy went into prison as he came back out with the mentality of somebody that's 15 or 14. Because he, because he, 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 in the same time, he even regressed because even though know, he was 17, he didn't really function as most of the people at that time because of the simple fact he was very poor or whatever. And all. anyway, he didn't go through the puberty cycle, so he ended right at, back at the time where we were in junior high school. And although I'm like 20, uh, I'm like 26 at the time, he's like 28 because he's like two years older than me. We end, he ends up back like 14 or 15. So we had to teach him how to dress Randy. They don't wear them big butter flat collar shirts no more from the 70s. This goddamn 1988. They don't wear that now, Randy. You know, Randy, you gotta learn how to shave now, Randy, because you are an adult. So we literally had to teach Randy how to be a damn adult. And he had to grow up fast. Okay, scene shift. Around 1988, I start having some visions. So I start having some visions of the particular Egyptian temples that you see right there. Most of those particular temples. And I had this particular vision of, I'm having to go back into the past, and having to go back into ancient Kemet. Now, get into this particular space, and this is before I got into any metaphysical stuff. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking this shit up in my head, and I didn't know it was visions the whole time, but it was so subtle and so a part of me. I'm saying, oh, I'm just, just thinking it's a man. And when I get behind the music, I would, this stuff start coming out. And I start seeing visions of these temples before I even really got deep into the art side of ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt, and start finding the shit that I start seeing in visions. So the thing is, I go back in time in this particular spaceship called the Kemetic Cosmic Kefra. Go back in time, and I go back to ancient Kemet. Now, when I get back to ancient Kemet, because I'm thinking I'm going back in time, when I get back, when I land, I land in the damn desert, and what I see is the same damn ruins that I see that you see in Egypt now. And I'm a little 
upset I'm saying because I don't I didn't go back in time. I'm, I'm seeing the ruins. Meanwhile, let me show hold your thing for a minute, and I'm gonna show you this. This was very key. That's why I brought these particular pictures. Meanwhile, the only thing that is there that is new is something that is called an Egyptian colony. Now this is an Egyptian colony. White man said we didn't have pie in Egypt. The black people, they didn't have pie. I told you about that the last time, didn't I? You know, the slumbo pie. There go your motherfucking pie right there. Yeah. Or, these are your pies right here. Called pylon. So we had the pie. Plus we had the pie. This is the fucking pie. Sure is. The eye of So pie equals melon. So we got the pie. So going back to the story, this is very key because this stuff comes out and I just meant to tell you this story when I came up. Now going back to the story, only thing I see new in the desert where it was supposed to be going back to Kimmy because he got in this ship spaceship that looked like a dumb deal. I went back. The only thing new um, I see is this. Now, in, these used to have these big wooden doors. They don't show them in some of the things. But some of these used to have big wooden doors on them. Anyway, I'm in the desert and there's a big wooden door in this pylon standing up. And I, I recognize that it's, it's, it's new. But it's got a big chain around it. Meanwhile, I'm trying to break through the chain to get through the big wooden door. Otherwise, on the other hand, I look on this side and there's a slave shack with some black motherfuckers from slavery sitting on the front porch, trying, looking at me, trying to get into this door. Anyway, I break through the door. As soon as I open the door, just like that Wizard of Oz, you know, she opened the door and she and shit turned into color. Well, in this case, as soon as I open the door, it enters us into the ancient world. Meanwhile, the people on the other side was looking. They could see me, but I couldn't see. And they was waiting for me to break through the door, open up the door, get through the chain. And as soon as I open the door, there's a loud cry. They start yelling and hollering because they realize that I got through. And then I just see all these thousands of black people in the ancient world, all black, in this vision like you ain't never seen before. It's like it's almost like a whole different dimension, because it was. Meanwhile, they picked me up, and they put me on the show because they're going to take me to the temple. And it's basically a temple look like this, a temple of Luxor, to go see the Pharaoh. Meanwhile, I look back, and the black family, the slave family that's sitting on the porch, they trying like a motherfucker because they're happy I got through the door. So, they take me in a procession up on the thing to go see the Pharaoh because they're happy that a brother came back through time and it symbolized a slave returning to ancient time. So, they taking me to the Pharaoh. I'm getting to the Pharaoh and he's sitting up, you know, the crook and the fail, in front of the temple with his queen or whatever. And I'm getting closer and closer, and when I get up on it, guess who the fucking Pharaoh is? Randy Brown. <laughs> Randy damn Brown. And the whole thing was that the whole thing is that this brother was an ancient brother back in the day. It was an advanced person, now a poor brother that's in jail and he got out, got all fucked up through the system. Then I got a channel later that he was an ancient person. We both were chilling as friends back in the day. Now the key to the thing is because I had to, to get to do what I had to do and basically going through life untouched. Not knowing any kind of, um, not knowing any, I see my crew from Philly came. Not knowing any kind of um, suffering, pain and suffering. Uh, uh, literally, the sacrifices that 
that he did, even when we was in real life, is almost like my nemesis or uh, the antithesis of what you call the opposite of me. He was poor, I was middle class, and as a result, he took all the shit that if I had any pitfalls or any type of thing that might have happened to me on a tragic level, Randy was living that while I'm doing this thing here. You see what I'm saying? Now, the key is, the key is, is this. We, the key is, is this. I tell the story to New York, Atlanta, and a couple of other places, but the story goes all over the country. About a year ago, he's in, back in Mullen, working at this locker plant. You know, they kill hogs and shit, you know. Anyway, they call him and they tell him, we want you to clean up around the place. So they clean up, and he cleans up, and he moves the cash register, and he cleans up all the stuff. Then after he leaves, they go back in and rob the place at night. His fingerprints on the cash register, they set him up. They come and get him and they put him back in jail last year after eight years. And the spirit said, well, in actuality, they put him back and all because, number one, when you released about him being the Pharaoh, they got scared. That's just the real deal shit. But then again, on the other hand, the spirit was like saying, it was the, the what you call the demiurge of the evil entities are working against us. They did it anyway thinking that they're trying to get you or trying to do something and they don't understand he's doing the sacrifice for you. So, the problem was, and I said this before, that um, for the mere fact that I got a guy that I grew up with that's connected with me and everything that has happened to me on a grandiose level as far as now, my, my, my blessings is, is consciousness and, and getting more knowledge. The opposite has happened to him. So it's also this type of thing that I cannot not be in this particular doing what I'm doing and sticking to my guns because there's a motherfucker in jail right now sacrificing for my fucking ass. And that's the serious shit. So they came back and got him and put him back in prison on some bullshit and it was a setup. And at first I just thought, you know, they just set him up and I didn't realize. And then it came to me, wait a minute. This brother is doing some shit while I'm out here, and he's the decoy, so they can't get to me. You see what I'm saying? But when I told the story about him being the Pharaoh, they went to damn mother and got this nigga ass and put his ass back in jail. And the setup shit was the way the government had them to do it. You see what I'm saying? So that's why we got to dedicate the energy to him and send some energy to him. And based on this here, they can, uh, he can be released based on this energy that's going to come and do it. Because I'm going to get on the God's ass to tell him they got to go and do some shit. Because we got to demand that type of thing. But on the other hand, it also goes to say that this particular story is a little bit about you that have the privy to have this particular knowledge and privy to this particular knowledge. You ain't got time to be bullshitting because there's some motherfucker out there, whether you know it or not, he sacrificed you because of your ass. They take the many and sacrifice the many for the one and two damn sparks. You gotta know what time it is. You see? And that's what's going on at this particular time. So now, let's deal with some stuff based on the lecture and based on what's going on right now. On what's going on right now. So we're gonna deal with some hard copy right now. So, um, um, uh, so, uh, let's deal with some things that's going on. How many people saw the movie Siege yet? Now, you know the movie Siege is the King Alpha plan, literally, worked out. Another movie to go see, white people jam-packed up in there to see is a movie called Bug's Life. Gotta go see Bug's Life. And Bug's Life is about some ants in the first part of the summer. They work to get up food for the grasshoppers. And then the grasshoppers come and get their food in the next part of the summer. They work to do their own shit. About like black people. <laughs> but the key is it's about 15 grasshoppers or less ruling about 2 million motherfucking ants. Meanwhile, meanwhile, 
one hand stands up and challenges them. And as a result, the guy says, well, it's just one ant, won't you just, you know, it's no big deal. The guy said, look, next year to be two ants, next year to be three ants, four ants. He said, you got to realize we are only a few people of an ancient origin on the earth, including the lighter skin derivatives of ancient Asians and all that. And still, their land once had an ancient black person on that ship or an ancient people. But they still thinking in actuality that this all is human race bullshit. And they can't understand the figure this stuff out. And moving was about that because the ants never went, and let's just say, if they was inside your backyard, they would never go beyond that backyard. So they had no way of knowing, and that's the way they do us. They have no way of knowing that the solidarity is in numbers. Or knowing that they, if they just went to another place, they wouldn't have to doggone keep giving this grasshopper shit. But it's all in the movie. No damn well, they ain't putting out nothing now that they ain't got no science in it. You got to understand that at this particular time. Is ants the same way too? I think ants is the same way, but that's on video now. So, uh, that's on, that's on video now, so, uh, um, you need to get that as well as small soldiers. Brother, yeah. The Gorgonites, which is black people, and the small soldiers, which is white people.